Welcome back again. Don't forget, if you don't already subscribe, please do so. Hit the bell for notifications for new videos that come out. It's almost summer. Major seasons upon us and content's gonna ramp up. Um, last year, my most popular video was a bunker cheat code video, giving a really super simple, basic bunker action. Um, I wanna go a level above that and talk about something that is widely misunderstood in bunker play. I honestly have never heard anyone else talk about it and describe it in the way I'm going to in this short video right now. Stay tuned. So let's take a look at the traditional bunker shot, right? Face, laid wide open, stick a glass of water on it, get the shaft down nice and low. See from that camera over there, really low. Make sure you roll the face open to add loft, cup your wrist, all that kind of stuff in order to try and expose this, the bounce. Now, I'm actually gonna suggest you do almost the complete opposite, unless there's a ton of sand in the bunker. As a basic, and then from there you can layer up and increase bounce piece by piece if you know what you're doing. So let's get through the first misunderstanding. So I aim at target, pretty much square onto this camera hopefully. Um, I'm told to put my ball up, got my face laid open. I've got this secondary camera here and the face right now, or the leading edge is looking straight down that camera or pretty close. Now from here, it would be suggested that you're trying to get the club shaft. Now I've done it before as well, I'm guilty it'd be suggested that you try and line the club shaft up to engage the bounce and get the most loft on the club. All right, fair enough, makes sense. But if you do that and you deliver an open club face, so let's just for a second say it's pointing back at that camera still. In reality, it probably wouldn't. It'd be slightly more square than that, but that's where the camera is. Now, if I get down to an impact here and I line the club shaft up so it's vertical from this camera angle, and my leading edge is looking at that camera and I'm gonna sit it on the sand, that, is the shaft lean. Okay, that shaft is leaning backwards. God, I don't know, 30 degrees? Significant, so this bounce has six degrees, uh, this way, sorry, has six degrees of bounce on it. It's 30 degrees back. That's 36 degrees of bounce in play. All right, that's before I've done anything else, like try and wind the club face open, try and get the club head past the hands even more, put the ball even further forward to my stance. I'm gonna suggest that that amount of bounce is Definitely good if there's a ton of sand in there, but for moderate depths and definitely compact sand, it's absolute death. Okay, now let me show you something else. If I were to have the face angle the same, and I were to make sure I moved forwards as I hit it, and I moved left, as in left with my chest, and I delivered shaft lean, which looks fairly significant from this camera. If we switch to that camera, how's the shaft leaning now? It's still leaning back right? There is still bounce added to this golf club, despite from this camera it looking like the shaft is leaning forwards. Okay, but we're actually in a position where we're looking at a combination of lie angle, so more this, and actual shaft lean this way. All right, a little bit confusing maybe, but I think the message here is that unless the sand is very deep, you don't need to do most of the things you've been told. And even then, you probably still don't need to do what you've been told. Um, just for multi multitude of reasons, right? If the sand's really deep and you do everything you're meant to do to get the bounce engaged, wind it open, do the wrist, throw the club, there's a good chance that club is gonna skip up off the sand before the ball, if you hit the sand at all. Okay, so I'm gonna suggest your basic bunker shots that you actually deliver some degree of shaffling. So I'm gonna put my face back towards this camera. Through the swing, I'm gonna try and make sure I move forwards. I'm not gonna try and cut my wrist, I'm gonna try and keep it fairly flat. And I'm gonna try and turn onto it and deliver some degree of shaft lean. Now that shaft lean has to be delivered and going left, as in left of target. If I drag it down the target line with an open face, I've got a problem. All right, so it's shaft leaning, but I'm going left with it this way. Okay, pretty decent shot, no problem at all. Divot's fine. From there, it will have looked like I was leaning it forwards when I hit it, but we know from this camera, that club shaft is actually leaning slightly back as far as shaft lean goes, so I've still got plenty of bounce on the golf club. All right now, if I want to engage a little bit more bounce, I can start to sprinkle in those ingredients I spoke about. So, what shall I do first? 
first one I think I'll do is I will add a little bit of cup in my wrist. Okay, but I'm gonna come down and I'm still gonna try and lean it to some degree. That cup's gonna take out a little bit of lean. Okay, so if I came down kind of flat wrist, where that camera, if I went flat wrist, face open, leaning forwards, shafts leaning back, whatever amount. If I had a little bit of cup in there, it's gonna lean back a little bit more. So I'm gonna expose a little bit more bounce by having a little bit more cup in my wrist, but I'm gonna do nothing else. I'm still gonna try and lean it, but the cup is gonna remove some of it. So I should just hit a little bit further back. It came out kind of soft, which was nice and I'm good with it. Now, let's get rid of some sand. We'll try and make it a little bit more compact. There's still a decent amount of sand in there, but you'll kind of get the point. Right, this is where if I cup it, open it, throw it, there's a great chance that thing is gonna skip way up in the air. So back here, I'd be looking like this, right from there, Look, throwing it beautifully, look at all that loft. Where are we now? 45 degrees leaning back. Extra 45 degrees of bounce, it's too much. So from here, you can actually put the ball back a little bit. As long as this face remains open as you hit. Now, there's a side note here. If you're the kind of player that twists the club into the ball and you go from open to somewhat square, then you can start to feel those things. Okay, you can start to feel a little bit of throw. You may start to feel a little bit of cup that's okay because you're not holding the club through impact so it's back at that camera so your bounce angle is going to be different if i rotate this club in this way all the way to the camera suddenly we're really looking at the true shaft lean okay so that kind of player would say actually needs to use more of the old school methodology if you're rotational if however you hold the loft and you hold the face open as you hit you need to do much less so a little bit more compact i'm going to drag it out more than that that's not enough There we go, getting a little bit firmer. Yeah, it's a little better. So here is where bounce would kill me, but I need flight, so I'm gonna open the face. But again, same deal. I'm gonna make sure that I turn onto it. I keep the shaft leaning forwards. There's no need to throw it. We know the bounce is in play. Okay, nice and high, just so easy. Um, Let's find a deep bit of sand. You've got a bit of a mountain here. Plenty of sand there. Now I can start to engage the older methods. I can roll it open, cut my wrist, give it a throw. As long as I don't twist it too much, I'm gonna keep a ton of bounce. So now I can throw this a little bit more. This is a little bit out of my comfort zone. And this is where I think people really go wrong. But it should help from this sand. There you go. See the difference in the, the sound and depth of divot. I said a ton of sound there, but I didn't need to get down to the base to get the club back out because I did all the stuff I needed to do to get this thing actually leaning back at that camera, looking more like this, getting that balance angle increased by 45 degrees, now playing 51. Okay, hopefully you understand that. Um, might seem a little bit complicated at first, but the, the real important thing for me in this is that we get away from looking at this camera looking at impact, seeing a shaft leaning wherever, and thinking we know what shaft lean and bounce is actually in play. We don't, we need a camera that's lined up with the leading edge of the golf club so we can see the true bounce angle on the golf club. Okay, the bounce is there. You've just got to know how to use it and what's really in play.